But thank you everyone for joining us today because uh, what we're going to focus on is a whole bunch of online resources that we have at Career Services that we find very valuable, but that we often find in appointments with students that, that people don't know about or don't know what they can get from these resources or don't know how to use them or don't know when to apply them or all sorts of these questions. And some of these resources we actually pay through. We love to make sure that these are resources that people are using and using effectively. So basically what I'm going to do today is, is I'm going to walk through a variety of different tools that cover this job search process, right? You're all coming from different backgrounds in terms of academic disciplines. You're all at different points in your process. Some of your masters, some of your PhDs, some of your postdocs, some of you are, are, are not any of those things, but you're all going to be somewhere on this process, right? In terms of thinking about what you want to do next, thinking about how to get the things that you want in terms of information through networking, effectively applying, interviewing for positions, and then you know, ideally getting those positions. So the tools are going to cover this wide spectrum to give you and everyone here the opportunity to learn how to use those effectively. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them in sort of segments. We're going to start off with this self-assessment and career exploration part of this process. And, and these two are linked together because as you're exploring careers, one of the first things that you have to do is think about you in terms of what you want, what you want in terms of a work-life balance, what you want in terms of the culture of the organization. So that type of exploration happens internally, and then think about how to apply that externally to see, well, what types of options are out there that allow you to match what you, you, know, what you think about yourself and what you want for yourself in terms of actual careers that are out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by focusing on uh, the Career Services website to make sure that you have every bit of this down and understand how to use this effectively. I know it's just a website, but there are things that people often miss from this. And I want to make you aware of some of the sections that are going to be important to you, right? So the first thing is that we break our populations down into these different distinct populations. We also have uh, industry communities. Many of you would be interested in engineering. Many of you may be interested in consulting roles. Many of you may be interested in life science. The consulting page, for example, will have lots of resources on applying for jobs, on case interviews, articles related to that, uh, resources that are connected to that. And so these are all things that you want to make sure that you are aware of and taking advantage of as you're going through our website. The next thing that we do is have a whole bunch of sections on how to do things. And this is relevant for today because we're going to be talking about how to network and, and how to apply with your materials and how to interview there are resources on this page that are going to sort of cover some of the topics that I'm covering, articles that related to that. Some of these articles are specific to PhD students because they come from a blog that I help to oversee that, that is written by PhD career advisors. Other things are more general. And then all these resources here are available for you to see. So make sure you know how to take a look at those things. One of the resources that is very relevant to exploration is going to be our, our outcome survey. So we do an outcome survey. We send out a career plan survey to all graduating students. So these are broken down by undergraduate, broken down by graduate. So we can look at the master's report for the School of Engineering here. And it's going to pull up this whole long 16-page uh, report on the graduation plans for master students in the School of Engineering. So th these are, you know, when they graduated, what roles that they're going into, what offers that they receive. But also, you know, we can look at specific types of roles that people are going into. And then we can go into sort of the actual programs that are out there. So if we're interested in bioengineering, we can then see the types of roles that people have got post-graduation, which gives you a sense of some of the paths that are out there. Now, obviously, these are sort of well-known paths for some of you. But in other areas, you may not know that these are organizations that are hiring and that people have gone into. And so it may give you an opportunity to sort of say to yourself, well, I've never heard of this organization. You know, what does that look like? What, is that, what types of roles do they have? What other types of roles might they have available? So I think that's a very handy way of just getting you know, familiar with some of the paths that people have taken, because these paths are likely to be paths that you can take as well. We have one for the PhDs as well. It follows much of the same type of details, right? So we go into details of when people got job offers, the types of roles that they go into. You know, we scroll down to the school, different schools out there, whether it's the School of Medicine or Arts and Sciences or Engineering. And here are some of the, the permanent school post-graduation destinations as well. So again, in terms of career exploration, it's all about gathering information and getting a sense of where other people have gone as you are thinking about your own career trajectories. The one sort of perhaps unique thing about our website, is not just a website, you can actually log into it. All you have to do is come in and log in with your pen key and password. So I'm going to do that right now. 
And the benefit of logging into our website is that when you go up to your name up in the top hand corner and go to preferences, you'll be able to update this to identify communities that you belong to or industries that you want to hear about or where you are in this process. Why I want pre-dental, I definitely don't want pre-dental. And then you can update your preferences so that uh, on a weekly basis you receive information from us. So the more you tell us about what you want, hopefully the more information that we can give you that is relevant to you. This search bar up here is where we're going to go to look for all of these resources that I'm going to be talking about through this process. And the first one that we're going to cover, as I mentioned, is Career Explorer. So I'm going to start off there. Whatever you're looking for on our website, just throw it in the search bar and obviously you'll, you'll get a, a better sense there because a lot of it is buried under different layers and different areas. Okay, so the next tool is Career Explorer and I'm going to go ahead and get this logged in and this takes us to our, our online subscriptions page and here's Career Explorer. Career Explorer is, is a free tool that you can take. It's, it's along the lines of things like the MBTI and the strengths quest in terms of it tries to ascertain through your answers to questions, the types of person you are and the types of career uh, path that you might want to go into. So you can go ahead and set up a free account to take your test. Let me log in here. And it's going to give you information that perhaps isn't surprising to you because you are after all inputting all the information. But what it does give you is the opportunity to sort of leverage slightly different vocabulary about yourself as you are looking for opportunities so that you're not missing out on attributes about yourself that perhaps you're not as comfortable talking about, right? So after taking my assessment, some of the things that the test told me is that I'm, I'm all these things. I'm a groundbreaker, I'm fantasy oriented, I'm competent, which is good, I'm deliberate, I'm, I'm good at maximizing, and I can click on any of these things and it's gonna sort of give me a sense of the type of personality that, that I am. Now again, these are things that you already know about yourself, but provide slightly different language about that can be helpful because as you're networking, as you're applying for positions, as you're even looking for positions, looking for opportunities where these skills match the position that you're interested in is always a great way to start. As part of this process, it started to break down some of the career matches that it thought uh, would be good for me. So that ranges from a professor to a zoo educator because I do have a PhD in animal behavior and I did study chickens. So zoologist is not a bad thing to be looking for. And as I click on any of these careers that are out there, it's gonna give me a sense of why I'm well suited to the role, how my skill sets match that. And you can see on the right hand side, it gives you some salary information. It shows you, you know, how that, uh, that, that sort of career field may be growing. Whatever field that you might be going into, you might find videos, you might find articles, you might find other things just to give you some some background information there. In terms of my actual report, it's going to sort of break down some of the things that it, the results show that, that will give me insight again into who I am. So this idea of being a groundbreaker, you say, what does that mean? And it's going to sort of break that down into these different parameters. It says I'm enterprising. It says, uh, you know, I'm investigative. And these are sort of components that make me who I am. It says what I can sort of be focusing my skills on and things I should watch out for. You know, any strength that you have can also be a weakness if it's used too much or in slightly different ways or, or inappropriate ways. So you have to sort of be wary of that aspect. So again, yours will be unique. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this, but it's, it's a very interesting way of beginning to break down some of the things that might be uh, options for you. If you're a graduate student and you're a PhD student or a postdoc, you've been in academia for the last you know, 10 years and you're very focused on seeing yourself one way, all these tests do is they, they sort of open your eyes to slightly different perspectives that you can take about not only how to describe yourself, but about how those skill sets might be applied. And if you want to chat with a career advisor about your results and sort of reflect on those, then you can always set up an appointment to, to chat with them about that. So back to the Career Services website, because the next tool that I want to focus on is our Career Shift tool. And this is a both a, an exploration tool and a networking tool. So now we're sort of crossing into the next part of our, our process. So is career shift. I'm going to log in again. So this is behind our, our pen key protected area. Career shift again. You, you can do this for free. You'll set up your free account. So after I log in, it's going to show me companies that fit a certain type of industry that you might be interested in, right? So I'm going to go over here to the companies tab and I'm going to do a search for companies. And, and in this case, what I'm going to search for are medical device companies. What I can do with this is I can say what companies sort of align with medical devices in a geographical area. So let's stick it with our Pennsylvania. And then I'm gonna do a search for that here. And it's gonna give me, what do we have? 527 companies in Pennsylvania that sort of fall under the umbrella of 
medical devices and equipment. And what's interesting about that is it's actually hard to find this information from other sources, right? So you can search on LinkedIn for companies, but you can't ask LinkedIn to give you all of the companies that fall in a certain area. So this is just a nice way of gathering together companies that, that are aligned so that then you can scroll through these and go, well, I don't know what that is, or I've never heard of that, or I want to you know, find out more information about that. But we can also narrow it down by keyword. Perhaps we want companies that are focused on uh, targeted drug delivery. So we go targeted. I'm going to narrow the search because 527 seems like a lot. So now we went from 527 to nine, which is far more manageable uh, as a sort of a starting point. As you look at this company, we can find company details out about it. Um, it's annual revenue, the number of employees they say that they have, a little bit of a description. You can see jobs that they might have listed. So we can search down here, clinical scientist, research associate, bioengineer, right? So if we click on a job like this, it's actually gonna take us right over to the Novio website. So this is actually something that's you know, current right now. One of the most helpful things in terms of the CareerShift website though is the company contacts, because this is actually gonna give me a list of people who work at the organization, their roles, and um, perhaps most helpful to some of you will be email addresses. All of these are provided here, and you can get a sense by looking at these that the code that Inovio uses will be first name dot last name, but it's actually not the case in every situation, right? So as you scroll through, there are people who don't have first name dot last name. Some people have a first initial last name. And so having the ability to find these emails uh, and be able to email someone at the appropriate time is a really good thing to do. We can also narrow it down by school attended, right? So I would tend to put this in uh, inverted commas, University of Pennsylvania search here, and we've gone down from whatever it was in terms of number of people to, so from about 262 down to about four contacts here who you know, are associated with Penn. I don't know where they're getting their information from, but I know that there are more people from Penn who work here. So this is not, again, the definitive number, but it's helpful. Uh, we'll look at Jean here just as an example, because we're gonna come back to her in a little bit when we look at LinkedIn, because my suggestion at this point in time, even though you have people, even though you have emails for them, we're not quite ready to reach out and connect with these people directly because you need to do a little bit more background research before you can sort of establish a good point of contact with these people. We are gonna sort of take our company here in Ovio, and we're gonna jump over to LinkedIn. Now, one of the things that you can do on LinkedIn, LinkedIn has people profiles, it has company profiles, it has school profiles, amongst other things. So the first thing I'm gonna type up here um, is, and I actually did the search for it already, is in Ovio. I'm gonna do a search for the company page. So if this was an organization that I was interested in, one of the first things I would do is I would follow them. If I follow the company, all of these things that they are sh putting on their feed get shunted to my feed on LinkedIn. So when I, I click onto LinkedIn, I'm gonna to start to get more information about what they're doing, which is gonna be helpful if I'm applying for jobs there so that I know more about them, which is gonna be helpful so that as I'm doing networking, I have questions that I can ask people about things that are going on. So following companies that you're interested in is going to be a really great way of, of doing that. On the left-hand side, we have a lot of information. So again, I can click on jobs over here and I can see sort of some of the real-time jobs. So you can see some of these were posted 19 hours ago. So you know that's a, a real position. They're actively hiring. Which jobs on LinkedIn are, are a great place to look for these opportunities. The People tab actually gives me a lot of information to play around with here. They are saying that they have 222 employees in Inovio who have LinkedIn profiles. And this is an interactive database that shows me where they're currently working and get a sense of, you know, who are the, the Penn alumni working there. So I just scroll down here and these are the six Penn alumni that are out there. Now I notice here that, you know, the, the person I, I, I highlighted last time, uh, Jean Boyer is not listed as a Penn alum. So uh, that struck me as interesting. So when I was playing around with this, you know, I went back and said, well, why isn't Jean Boyer listed as a connected Penn in CareerShift, but not in LinkedIn, and obviously if I click on her profile, I find out that she's not actually a Penn alum, but she is a former Penn faculty member. Some of you may know her. And so that's the connection with, with the University of Pennsylvania that CareerShift picked up. So if I go back again and I narrow down our field to Penn people, because that's always a good starting point to, to go, and I click on, click on Caitlin's account here, you know, I can see where she got to, she's a clinical scientist, has an interesting background that includes being a yoga instructor, working at Penn for a while. You know, if any of these this sort of experience 
was of interest to you, then you might want to begin to think about how to reach out to keep them finding email through Chris Shift or otherwise to, to start that. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about later is this idea that I can't actually get an email for Caitlin through LinkedIn. If I click on her contact information, I don't see anything here in terms of email. I just have the URL, which is where I am already. But I'm going to talk a little later about secondary connections in terms of using my mutual connection, Brenda, to, to be able to connect with Caitlin if I wanted to. But for now, I'm going to go back to just our Inovio employers, because there's one other thing I want to sort of focus on, which is, you know, for anyone who wants to know how their degree might be applicable to this role, if I clear this and get back to just to the 222 employers, what I can do on the next page, so this is where they live and where they studied, the next page shows me what they studied. And so here, if I wanted to find people with mechanical engineering, and we'll do one more, and chemistry, right? So people who have backgrounds in these things have jobs in Inovio. I might say to myself, well, what jobs do they have? What types of roles do they play here? And so again, what this shows me is how there's a diversity of career options at this organization. And if I have a particular background and I want to know how people are using their engineering background or their chemistry background, obviously I can narrow it down to people who might have that background. Now, these aren't pen alarms. Remember, these are just employees at Inovio, but you may have connections to some of these people because your networks are different from my networks. Now, at this point in time, because these people don't know you and you don't know them, your job is not to go around and connecting with these people. They have no reason to want to connect with you. So you have to be a little bit more strategic about that, which is why I think starting with alumni from Penn is the best thing to do because you always have something in common with uh, your alumni contacts. So I'm going to go back to the, the main search bar on LinkedIn. I'm going to click on the school page. And then right on the left-hand side, just like we saw for the company, there's an alumni tab, which is similar to the people tab that they had for companies. So this is the other way around. So it shows you where they work, having graduated from Penn, rather than where they studied, which is what the company page shows me. But again, it shows, you know, that there are six columns of information here that are useful, where they live geographically, where they work, apparently mostly at Google Mail, what they do in their role. So students might list themselves under research education, but everyone else might be something that they're doing as part of their work what they studied, what they say they're skilled at, and how you're connected. So again, we can go back down here and pick and choose some of the key skill sets that, or, or the key discipline areas that you might be interested in just to get a sense of some of the roles that people with these backgrounds are doing. So this is a much broader way of exploring. So I'm basically asking the question, People with backgrounds in engineering or computer engineering or systems engineering, or throw in a bioengineering one here. So if you want to add one that's not listed, you just click on add up here. And you go to bioengineering, sort of bring up bioengineering, biomedical. These don't map exactly to your actual degrees or major, but they just give you broad areas. So I took the 160,000 alumni and current students, which it was beforehand, down to 15,000. It's focused now on these broad areas that you might be interested in. And then what I can do on top of that is do a broad keyword search within this 15,000. So if I want to do nano technology, because I'm not being very creative, then I get down to a much more respectable 300 alumni, which again, the smaller you make it, probably the more relevant it's going to be. We can see where these alumni are. So a lot of them are in industry, some of them in consulting, some of them doing research in government labs or in universities. And if I keep scrolling down, then these become those 300 alumni that I've built it out from the, the Penn alumni group. So again, this is narrowing down the focus so that I have more targeted people that I might want to reach out to. So Brian Edwards, we find out that he's currently working here at Penn. So you may know Brian Edwards. If I go back, because today we're only looking at people called Brian. So Brian DePaulo is our other one working at Halo Lab. So we're going to click on Brian's profile here. So again, Brian is a second degree connection, which means I don't get any contact information. Please notice that in Brian's LinkedIn URL, he has customized it to get rid of all the random numbers and letters that come on after your URL if you haven't customized it. So you can go to your edit profile section and customize that to make sure that it's much more professional looking like this. So I can't contact Brian this way, but I could, uh, if I wanted to reach out to my mutual connections and say to them, hey, uh, Victoria, I see that you're connected with Brian uh, on LinkedIn. I'm trying to reach out to him because I have some questions. 
could you introduce me or could you share an email with me for Brian so I can reach out to him? And then you, you could reach out to Brian and say, hey, Brian, Victoria said you'd be a great person to chat with about your you know, industry work. You know, I'd love to be able to chat. So your mutual connections allow you to sort of tap into your second degree connections in a very effective way. So scrolling through Brian's profile, first of all, I see a resume, which is great because I can look at his resume and see how that reflects his current industry sort of setting that gives me ideas about how I might shape my resume if I were applying to similar jobs. I can also see the type of work that he's doing. So if I have questions about his background or how he got to where he was, these are things that I can reach out and, and ask him. But let's say my, none of my mutual connections uh, get back to me or they don't remember connecting with Brian and they're not helpful. One of the things I quickly want to show you is if I take Brian's name here, we're going to copy this. I am going to jump over to another platform that's a really great tool to use, which is QuakerNet, which is the Penn alumni specific Penn only alumni platform. So everyone has access to this. You can just go to QuakerNet. Uh, you can log in with your Penn key. So we're in QuakerNet right now. Um, I'm going to put Brian's name in here as, as one of the search keys. I'm going to see what comes up. We have one result. Here's Brian, graduated in 2010, Halo Lab. So we know this is the right person. I click on Brian's profile here, and what do I get? I get a Gmail address, which obviously doesn't change no matter how many times Brian might change his job. And I can see that you know, if I wanted to reach out to him now, I could say to Brian through Gmail, hey, I found your profile on QuakerNet. I saw on LinkedIn that you're working at Halo Labs. I saw that you have a background in X. That's just like me, and I'm interested in working in the industry too. I'd love to hear about what you're doing in your current role and some of the skills that you're using to, to do that. So that's basically how you start that process is that you're able then to sort of just, you know, leverage what you're finding on LinkedIn and then use a tool like QuakerNet to sort of jump over and, and get more information. One of the things that we can do here is obviously we can do a broader search for people. So on QuakerNet, you can search by school, by degree level, by major, and minor, by how they're involved in activities. You can narrow it down by geographical location. You can do it by employer or employment type or industry. There's even a tab here that says, you know, search those who have indicated that they're willing to provide career advice. And so that sort of makes it even easier to find people who should say yes when you reach out to them to ask for advice. So I'm going to search here as a broad keyword across all alumni. We have 37 results, you know, and I can scroll through this and see when people graduated and where they are. But they're also really great because if I pick on someone like Boris, Boris graduated in 2009. It says here that they're a PhD candidate. So we have to figure out, are they still a PhD? In fact, they got their undergraduate here in 2009. And then they went on to Drexel in 2012. So chances are this account on QuakerNet hasn't been updated because if you've been out for uh, 11 years, you're probably not going to come back to QuakerNet. But again, I can take Boris's information from QuakerNet and go back to LinkedIn and see what it is that Boris is doing right now. And so Boris is a material research engineer at the US Naval Research Lab. So this is just an example of how you can sort of leverage these two tools together. Now, the reason that you're looking for these people is that you basically want to be able to do informational interviews with them, right? So informational interviews are just ways for you to get answers to your questions about what it's like to work in a particular organization or a particular role. This is a guide on our website. You can find it in our search bar. You can find it under the networking, how to network tool thing. So I, I highly recommend this very easy to read guide on how to get started with informational interviewing because it will be very helpful to you. I'm going to jump back to LinkedIn because I, before I leave this, I want to show you a couple of things on the jobs page, which I think can be very helpful. So obviously on LinkedIn, there are plenty of jobs that are out there and you want to you know, make sure that you have your job searches saved so you get information that, that pops up in, in your field. I'm going to do a nanotechnology search again. I can create a job search alert for this if I want to be reminded of what's going on. This is the feature that I want to show you. So for some jobs, not all of them, you'll see this how you match section right here. And basically what this is doing is it's taking the information in the job description and it's comparing that to your LinkedIn profile to show you how well your profile matches this job. You know, you want to make sure that your profile reflects some of these keywords if this is the type of job that you're interested in. 
because your profile should also be somewhat of a reflection of your resume. This is just another way to make sure that you're matching what you're seeing in terms of the keywords in the job and the keywords in your resume and application materials. So I'm gonna jump back to our website. I'm gonna to go to a resource that we have called Targeted Resume, which is another free resource that you can use to think about how well to position your resume as you begin to apply for uh, positions, right? So this is now moving into the application stage of the process. So again, much like our other resources, you can create an account on this for free because we've signed up uh, so that you can do that. And then this gives you an opportunity to basically see how well your resume matches particular jobs that you might be interested in, right? So I'm gonna click on the targeted resume tab here, and I'm gonna take that job from the senior scientist position here from this role. I'm gonna copy all the text from the job description here. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna paste it all in. Um, and then it's gonna ask me to upload my resume. So I have that ready to go here. And then it's gonna go through and it's gonna do a comparison, which is basically what employers are doing when you submit your resume to a job, right? They, they have applicant tracking software that takes the keywords from the job description, takes the keywords from your resume and says, hey, look, this person is a good match or a bad match. And sometimes these uh, applicant tracking software, they stop you from see getting your materials to a real person, right? So if I apply for this job and I have a, a you know, 29 uh, out of 100 match, then probably no person wants to read my resume because it's really not worth it because I'm not a good fit. So what this uh, tool does is it shows you some of the words that are mentioned in the job description that I haven't mentioned at all in my resume. Now, my resume wasn't targeted at all, so it's not surprising, right? So that's one thing it does. It shows you where you do match things. So I have teamwork things, so it says that's great. But what I can actually do with this tool is I can take my resume and I can see this number over here and I can start to make changes that might help me sort of be a better fit. So let's say I am focused on nanotechnology, but I forgot to mention it. If I put the word nanotechnology in, I immediately go up in terms of the score. Some of the keywords that are missing are uh, engineers and chemistry. So if I happen to advise engineers, so advise uh, engineers, and I go back up to the top. So now it's, it's shown me that I've, I've clicked on that and my score's gone up. And as you're doing this, you can just keep track of the changes that you're making. I'm gonna search for this last tool that we have, which is Interview Stream, which is a mock interviewing platform that allows you to sort of practice interviewing as you are preparing for interviews that you are uh, having uh, coming up. Now, this is great because most interviews right now are remote interviews. So practicing it in a sort of a, a remote environment is gonna be really helpful for you. So again, I'm gonna log in to interview stream. Uh, you'll set up your free account in the way that you've done with all the other things. But what you can do on interview stream is that you can create a, an interview that is either one that has already been pre-made for you. So if you were to click on this, these are just 10 question interview sets that you can choose. Some of them are focused on behavioral based questions like critical thinking. Some of them are based on particular types of industries, engineering, technical consulting, uh, private equity sales. So you can go through this and there'll be 10 questions that you can go through to practice interviewing. You can also create your own custom interviews. So they have over 7,000 pre-recorded questions that you can take advantage of for different types of fields that are out there. So of all of these different questions, you know, we can scroll through and we can find you know, the general questions, perhaps the 15 most common questions. And then you know, I could click on here to see what the question looks like. How would you define success? So then you know, these are all just pre-recorded questions. There's no one on the other end, so you don't have to be nervous. But if I wanted that question, I could drag it over to my question set and then this would become the interview that I'm creating for myself. And then I can go through it and practice that. Now, this is great because you can check to see what your background looks like. So if I go back to, you know, my recordings, here's one I did earlier for a single question. So here I am. Well, um, I am Dr. Joseph Barber. I'm a senior associate director here at Career Services. Um, I, I guess I, I meet with students and do um, programming on things like how to uh, interview, how to interview appropriately. Um, so yes. So the great thing about this tool is that you can send this 
video, I can share this by sharing the URL with anyone I know and say, can you give me feedback on it? And as the video is playing, you can actually type in a comment right here um, and it will, it will match that comment to the point in the video. That was terrible. So here's a hint for you, just from what I've learned about doing all this remote interviewing. If you have a swivel chair, like I did here, you will swivel when you're on an interview with a video uh, at, because you're nervous and your body will make you swivel on a chair. And just like I was here, uh, it's incredibly distracting for the, for the people to see that you're swiveling backwards and forwards. So if you're doing an interview uh, for a job, get rid of the swivel chair and keep a fixed chair and you won't wobble around as much. So you can do a, a self-assessment, you can do assessment of how well you've done, but as I said, you can always send it out to people and they'll be able to see what that looks like and give you feedback on that. 